Scientists have long created grandiose computational models of the universe. They're now focusing on smaller systems, albeit those systems are no less spectacular. Our body cells are like their own little worlds, a swirling mix of molecular alchemy that has proven too intricate to fully digitize. However, because to advancements in synthetic biology and computation, a team of researchers from the University of Illinois, the J. Craig Venter Institute, and Dresden University of Technology claim to have produced the most comprehensive digital clone of a cell to date. Welcome to today's episode of AI News. In this episode, I will show you how an artificial intelligence managed to simulate an entire biological being and what this could mean for the future. Digital representations of everything from DNA and genes to mRNA, protein factories, and lipid membranes are included in the 3D simulation. Once finished, the scientists powered up their synthetic cell and saw it grow from conception to its first division. They hope that simulations like these will help scientists better understand the fundamental laws of life. The research builds on previous advances in synthetic biology. Scientists reported in 2016 that they have produced a synthetic cell by reducing a bacterial genome to its bare essentials, 473 genes, and then manufacturing this minimum genome and inserting it into an empty cell host. Though this minimum cell, known as JCV Syn 3.0, was found nowhere else in nature, it was nonetheless capable of thriving, although barely. Creating the smallest cells in existence aids scientists in distilling life's most fundamental necessities, it also serves as a good target for computer simulation. The researchers behind the present work improved JCV Syn 3.0 by including a few more genes to make it more robust. JCV Syn 3A is a novel minimum cell with 493 genes. That is greater than its ancestor, but it is still only half the amount of genes found in Mycoplasma's mycoides, the bacterium that gave rise to its genome, and one-eighth the number of genes found in E. coli bacteria. 94 of the gene's roles, however, remain unknown, according to the researchers. The overarching goal of simulations of all kinds is to accelerate and encourage practical exploration. The scientists can perform more tests quicker by modeling cells in detail, while simultaneously keeping track of every component in the cell. The goal is to figure out how those 94 mystery genes work and gain a deeper understanding of what makes life tick. But first, you'll need a high-fidelity simulation that closely resembles the genuine thing. The scientists created the digital cell by slicing up its minimum cell and imaging the pieces to assist them arrange the cell's critical components in 3D space. They determined the proper quantities of each by analyzing the cell's internal proteins and those that make up its membrane. They programmed in physical and chemical traits, a biochemical roadmap of interactions, including how the various components diffuse through the cell and how energy is utilized throughout the cell's life cycle. The simulated cell includes dozens of interactions between DNA, lipids, amino acids, gene transcription and translation, and the cell's protein factories. It's the most detailed simulation of its kind yet. The most crucial part was putting the simulation to the test and comparing the results to the behavior of actual cells in the lab. We constructed a computer model based on what we understood about the minimum cell, and then we performed simulations," said Zane Thornburg, a doctoral student at the University of Illinois. We also tested to see if our simulated cell behaved like the actual thing. Much of the simulated cell's activity matched findings in the lab, and it's already helping the scientists understand how the cell functions and make predictions about how alterations to its DNA would affect it. For example, the simulation revealed how the cell allocates its energy, it spends the majority of its energy carrying important nutrients across its membrane, and how long mRNA molecules remain before being destroyed down. In one scenario, the scientists modified the digital cell's genome by reintroducing two non-essential genes, and the model projected that the alteration would reduce the time between cell divisions by 13%. After repeating the experiment with actual cells in the lab, the scientists discovered that the time between divisions was reduced by 13%. More experiments like these are in the works. The existential issue we should be asking ourselves is whether or not we live in a synthetic universe. The notion that we live in a simulated world may appear unusual and crazy to the general public, yet it is a concept shared by many of our time's finest minds, including Neil deGrasse Tyson, Ray Kurzweil, and Elon Musk. 
In a podcast with Lex Fridman, an MIT research scientist, Elon Musk famously raised the question, what's outside the simulation? To understand how we may be living in a simulation, one must investigate the simulation hypothesis or simulation theory, which posits that everything of reality, including the Earth and the cosmos, is in fact a computer-generated simulation. While the concept extends back to the 17th century and was first advocated by philosopher René Descartes, it gained widespread attention in 2003 when Professor Nick Bostrom of Oxford University published a major paper titled, Are You Living in a Computer Simulation? Nick Bostrom has recently backed up his findings with probability analysis to back them up. There are other interviews in which he elaborates on his points of view, including this one at Google headquarters. If you look at the history of video games, you will notice a distinct innovation curve in game quality. Pong, introduced by Atari Inc. in 1982, let players to compete by playing a tennis-style game with simple two-dimensional visuals. Video games grew swiftly. The 1980s saw the introduction of 2D graphics, the 1990s saw the introduction of 3D graphics, and since then, we have seen the introduction of virtual reality. When it comes to virtual reality, the rate of advancement cannot be overstated. Initially, VR had a number of issues, including headaches, eye strain, dizziness, and nausea. While some of these limitations persist, virtual reality today provides immersive educational, gaming, and travel experiences. Based on the exponential technology improvements indicated by the law of accelerating returns, we may predict how we construct a simulation. Meanwhile, determining who created these simulations is a difficult challenge. There are several scenarios that have been offered, all of which are equally legitimate because there is currently no method of testing or evaluating these hypotheses. According to Nick Bostrom, an evolved civilization may choose to undertake ancestor simulations. These are essentially simulators that look and feel exactly like reality, with the purpose of emulating human ancestors. The number of mimicked realities is potentially infinite. When you consider that the entire aim of deep reinforcement learning is to train an artificial neural network to better itself in a simulated situation, this is not a huge leap. While the research is promising, the behavior of the simulated cells did not always match that actual cells in the lab. Furthermore, the simulation is now confined to biological processes. A future iteration might incorporate physics into the equation. To completely understand the organism, we need to kind of mimic all of the forces and interactions of every atom or molecule of the cell," said John Glass, a co-author on the new work and the Venter Institute's Synthetic Biology Group head. Still, having such a comprehensive model to play with is wonderful. The team made it available on GitHub to other academics and is already working on enhancements. Our model provides a window into the inner workings of the cell, demonstrating how all of the components interact and alter in response to internal and external inputs," said Zaida Luthi Shulton, a chemistry professor at the University of Illinois and research-led. This model, as well as other, more advanced models to come, says the author, will help us better comprehend the fundamental principles of life. So, what is your opinion on this rather amazing accomplishment and its potential of eventually being able to simulate entire living beings and being able to test biomedicine without any ethical concerns? Please tell us your opinion in the comment section below. I would love to hear what you have to say about it. Thank you for watching AI News. We consistently report on the newest technologies that are shaping the future of our world. We'd appreciate you subscribing and watching our other videos. See you around and take care.